Hello everyone and welcome to how to import a part from Blender through Unity into Kerbal Space Program. I've done a video sort of like this before, but people wanted it again and there are some differences. I really wish I didn't have to make this video because it's gotten a bit harder, especially to set up the project in Unity so that we can do the importation. And so that's why we have this uh, part tools window here. So you'll have to search for KSP part tools. I'll link this page in the video description But let's take a look at what it says here. It's been updated and recompiled for unity this version and uh, uh, That is suitable for KSP 1.10. It's also fine for KSP 1.8.1 Which is what I'll be using. I don't know why but some people say that my parts don't pop up in KSP 1.10. I don't use KSP 1.10, I use 1.8.1. So that's something I'll have to investigate, but keep in mind that what I'm doing may be wrong for Kerbal Space Program 1.10, and there might be something I'm doing wrong. But uh, yeah, it was good for 1.8.1, so we'll go with this. So the latest version of KSP Part Tools can be downloaded from here, and what you'll get is a file called Part Tools underscore Asset Bundles. So I'm just going to uh, go ahead and well, I'll click that. So I'm gonna save that, and I'll just put it under Kerbal Mods. I probably already have it here. Yes, I do. Uh, why don't I save it as a new one? We'll call this one 2020. Okay, and so we'll have a new version of that. And then we have to set up our Unity project. So here is Unity Hub, which if you install Unity these days, you'll have this Unity Hub. It allows you to have multiple versions of Unity. So you can see I've got 2019.3.15 uh, and 2019.2.9 among other versions. Uh, so either one of these is uh, good enough for this 2019.2.2, uh, which you, you can still get. Uh, is the one that they uh, meant this all for, but I've been using 2019.3.15. Maybe that's why uh, it doesn't work with 1.10, I don't know. So maybe you just want to get the one that they say that they've built it for. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, 2019.3.15, so I'm gonna create a new project in that version. You can see I've got these three versions here. Okay, and then it gives you uh, create a new project 3D. Yes, we're in 3D. And I'm gonna call this uh, KSP import, okay, and create. Okay, so let me bring the Unity window over here, and it's finished setting up the whole deal. And we see some packages that it already comes with. And if we take a look at this page, it says um, uninstalled built-in text mesh text mesh pro from the Unity thing. And that's this text mesh pro, that's a problem. So we are going to go to the window up here, package manager. Okay, so here's package manager and we see a whole bunch of packages, but what we want are the ones that are in the project and text mesh pro is here. And so we click remove. Okay, and that's because uh, the uh, KSP requires an older version of that. And so we've gotten rid of that. And back here we see download this release, the specific one that they want to use. And it is a Unity package. Keep in mind that we have not actually imported part tools yet. So first things first, let's unzip the Unity package out of this one. This is the newest one. And I guess I'll just overwrite what I have here. I have the 1.9.1 .1 there. Or uh, this this one from 2017. Uh, well, hold on. I might want to keep this one. Let me just rename it temporarily. All right, so we've unzipped the part tools package. And then in here, we can go import package. And here we see that package and open. And it'll decompress. And once it does, you'll get a window like this. And we just import all the things. Okay, and once that happens, we'll see a part tools folder, plugins folder, squad core folder in our assets. Next up, we will import the other package, custom package. And there's a text mesh pro. And we'll get this updated one. And 
maybe that's better for 1.10. Hopefully it's not incompatible with 1.8.1. And we've got all this stuff here, import. Note that this uh, unloading broken assembly thing down here can cause crashes at runtime. We're going to fix that while this is importing. I'll remind you that there is another step here. It says import custom bundle and then disable validate references from KSB asset compiler and KSB assets in that folder. And hopefully that'll fix the problem. Okay, so plugins, KSB assets. Uh, it's this KSP asset compiler. Uh, validate references should be off. Well, it's already off. Uh, this one needs to be off too. So this KSP assets. Don't forget to click apply. Fine. Taking a look at the console. Yep, console. Let me just clear that and see if it continues to have problems. So we'll see. We'll look down here to see if there's any errors ongoing. But now we need an assets folder for our parts. So we're going to create a parts folder. And we will never have to do this importation again. Okay, this is only once. And you're never going to have to worry about it again. You're just going to use the same project for all your part importations. KRE-075 was the engine that I was making. Okay, so now we have a folder for our raw parts that we got from Blender. Now, Blender, uh, you just need to export as an FBX file. And however you have your textures, the FBX file is not going to contain the textures. So you're going to have your textures in some other way. You had imported the texture file, you had used an image editing program, and then brought it into Blender the way I described in the previous video. So this is what my KRE-075 folder looks like. These were the reference photos up here the blend files, the FBX file, and what we're actually going to deal with is a cluster of four of these engines because that's how they appear on the first stage and what we were modeling was one of those first stage engines, not the upper stage engine. So I want this FBX file and then I created a series of three different materials so that there would be three different looks to the metals involved in the engine. So we'll take all of these. And that's a, more of a Substance Painter thing. These texture files were generated in Substance Painter. But I showed you how to make different materials. And again, the important thing is each mesh only has one material. Okay, so this is the FBX file. And we see the metals on here. I'm a little bit suspicious because there's actually supposed to be one more. And that's the, the collider material. So uh, we're sort of missing that, so I'm worried. But first we have to create materials, and we will then assign them into here. This is sort of new. And uh, for this, I want to change this view to uh, sort of this uh, format. And I'm going to create a material. I'm just going to call this KRE-075 Metal 1. And I'm going to create another material. And so you'll have to do this for every material that you do. Uh, you could just have one material. That's not a problem, especially if you've uh, put all the materials onto one JPEG or PNG in an image editing program. So we can uh, highlight all of these. And we need to change the shader to KSP's own shader. You should have a KSP folder here under shaders. And we need KSP shaders here. You can pick whichever one you want. I use bumped specular most of the time. And here we use, you see a main texture and a bump map. And that's why I have these. Uh, the base color and the normal are the main texture and the bump map. So I select this one. And I just drag and drop base color up here and a normal map here. Now there isn't a metallic thing or the actual specularity thing. Oh, uh, you, you can just use the shininess and specular color here, but it isn't a map. Uh, so that you can apply uh, some specularity here, or you can just use textures unlimited, which is what I generally do. So uh, you saw I clicked fix texture for the normal map, and you have to do that. So once again, I dragged the normal map in here and fix now. And that just marks it as a normal map instead of just a random texture. Otherwise, it won't know. 
Okay, so we've made our three materials, and in here I just drag and drop the materials. Metal 1 into metal 1, metal 2 into metal 2, and metal 3 into metal 3. You can be even more descriptive if you want, but that was fine for me. Okay, and click apply. Now, if you have an animation, which we don't for this part, uh, you will want to change the rig to legacy, and then apply that. And then your animation data will be sitting here and you will name your animation and uh, set how many frames it has. Uh, usually you will have done that in Blender anyway. The, the, in Blender you make the animation if you have an animated part. Uh, you do not have to animate gimbling. That is one thing that you do not have to animate. You don't have to animate the thrust of anything. That's handled by Kerbal. And... Um, yeah, I, I think everything else... Uh, oh, you don't have to animate, like, control surfaces. You do have to identify which axes, axis they're on. And so there are some things you don't have to animate, some things you do. Um, but yeah, so if we had an animation, you'd import it here. But okay, so we have our materials, and this is the part, and now we are set to drag the part into the sample scene. Okay, well, uh, shader error... Fail to open source file. Part tools, shaders, auto light. I guess we won't use the bump specular shader. I don't know. Uh, is there one that won't have this auto light thing? Oh, I don't know what's going on with the KSP shader. Okay, just out of curiosity, I'm going to try and... <laughs> you might not want to do this. Um, import uh, an older version of part tools. So let me try uh, the 1.9.1 1. version. And it seems to uh, note that some of these shaders are different. I might have my answer for why my parts don't work in 1.10, but I don't know what's going on here, to be honest, with the shader. Okay, well... Let's see now. We've got something here. I've got two different versions of the shaders now. Oh, joy. So, I'm going to select all these. Go KSP, Bump Specular, and... Well, I see some of the streakiness that they're supposed to have. The shininess is going to be uh, applied by... Textures Unlimited. At least they're not purple. So, I don't know, there's some weird thing going on with the shaders with the newest part tools that I don't understand. And so I'm using older shaders, and that probably means that these aren't going to work with... Um, and maybe it's the version of Unity, I don't know. Uh, so here, welcome to our world, basically. Uh, oh, I probably want the light. Um, so yeah, yeah, this is annoying as all heck and we need to create a game object just create an empty game object we're gonna tuck our engine into the game object and we are going to say the game object needs a KSP component part tools we're going to set the game directory to wherever we want the part tools to pop up. No, the parts to pop up. So whatever folder you're going to be storing your parts in while you're writing your configuration file. Okay, so now we've got the folder that we want. And so I'm going to create a subfolder within that called KRE. Oh, uh, let's just call it the... Um, should I call it the KSLV? I, I guess I'll call it the KSLV in this case. And there are different names. And then the model is going to be KRE-075X4. Okay, so that's the model. We want textures as PNGs. Uh, those are our materials. Okay, so, but we need to tell Kerbal where the thrust is going to come from. And I'm going to create a new game object. So I'm going to create an empty. I'm going to name this thrust transform. 
naming it just like that with the lowercase and the uppercase T on transform. I'm going to rotate it so that the blue arrow is pointing down like that. So that's going to be the direction of the thrust. The blue arrow is the direction of the thrust for engines. For RCS thrusters, the green arrow is the direction of the thrust. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, these nozzles aren't at 0, 0, 0, unfortunately. And, um, did you appear at 0, 0, 0 at all? I'm going to reset everything to 0, 0, 0. I don't know why it wasn't before. I'll have to investigate that sometime. Uh, it's probably the way I imported it. I probably dropped it in the bad way. Okay, so we're going to have four thrust transform because there's four nozzles. The gas generators we're not going to include because they would be smaller plumes. And this is really telling uh, not uh, telling where the main thrust is coming from and also where the plumes are coming from. So we don't want the eight plumes. And I'm going to pull this. Uh, we can go to an ISO, well, uh, uh, orthographic view uh, by clicking that thing. And so we want to get the right level. And I happen to know that I set the engines so that they are at 0.7 and 0.7. The other important piece of information is that what used to be the Z axis, the up down axis in Blender, is now the Y axis. So you can see the Y axis is minus one here. And that used to be the Z axis in Blender. I I think that there's a whole right hand rule, left hand rule thing going on, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, I think the Z axis is reversed and uh, from what the Y axis used to be. X axis, if I recall, is the same. Anyway, it's all messed up. Uh, we want to duplicate this, and one of them is going to be in the negative X. And we're going to duplicate. One of them is going to be both negative. And, oops, negative, and duplicate. One of them is just going to be negative in Z. And so that will be our four, and we need to make sure that they're all named the same thing. For RCS thrusters, again, it's going to be the green arrow. You can have as many as you want, and it is going to be called capital R, capital C, capital S, and then lowercase thruster. And that's just by convention. In theory, you could name it something else, but I'm not gonna. I'll be using that for everything. It's probably safer that way. Okay, so these thrust transforms, we want to match up with their appropriate chambers. Otherwise, if we gimbal the chambers, that's not gonna work out very well. So we are gonna pair that up. That's chamber two. So we're gonna put it up with chamber two. And this one is, I think, chamber zero, yeah. So that's going to go with chamber zero. And finally, this one with chamber one. OK, so we've got one per. Now there's another problem, and that's the gimbling. So I'm going to create an empty and call this the gimbal. And you can also have as many gimbals as you want. You could gimbal the whole thing. The gimbal vector is also the blue one. So we want that pointing down like that. and we want things to be gimbaled from about that height, I think. And you could have four different gimbals, or you can have one for the whole set, and then they won't be able to do roll, really. But I'll, I'll gimbal each chamber individually, which will break the, the sub-assembly, uh, not the sub-assembly, well, prefab. Um, it'll break the prefab, so I'll just unpack the prefab right now. And I'm going to set it, again, uh, same locations, 0.7 and uh, 0.7. And one's negative only in Z. The height doesn't change. And we rename. Okay, and again, matching with what we want. So this, well, first of all, pull all the gimbals into the game object. Um, we can go ahead and pull it into this uh, KRE-075 thing. And that chamber is there, which goes with this gimbal. So I'm just going to drag this chamber down into this gimbal. Okay, so the gimbal is like there, and the chamber is there, and the thrust transforms down there. And finally, this chamber goes with the last one. 
Okay, so in theory, they'll independently gimbal. So I think that uh, covers all the stuff that we have to do here. I'm going to go ahead and now write the file. Oh, I forgot the collider. Shoot. So for some reason, the collider didn't import with the with the stuff. I guess I must have left it invisible. Well, we can I can show you how to deal with that. Let's go back to Blender for a sec here. The colliders are invisible, so I didn't catch the colliders because I had temporarily made them invisible. And that was the problem. So we could re-import, I could file, export, and um, yeah, it won't catch the invisible objects, which is fine. So I'll just export FBX and uh, the, the same object, uh, not selected objects, we haven't selected anything. And there's a bake, bake animation thing down here. I usually turn these two off. That's so that we don't get a whole bunch of different animations. Everything's in the same animation. And that's probably better for Kerbal. And apply modifiers is fine. So I just go export. Now, how do we make sure that the project gets updated with this new FBX version? Well, let's... Uh, open this in Explorer and then we can go into Assets, Parts, KRE-075, uh, pull up the version from our Blender folder. So this FBX has been updated, replace. And now if we go here, it'll update that automatically. And But unfortunately we broke the we broke the prefab, so hold on a sec. <laughs> we gotta undo some of this, as painful as that is. I'm gonna take the gimbals out of the object. I'm gonna delete this object. So now we have colliders. And let me just check, this has the materials assigned. Okay, collider, 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 collider. We're gonna uh, delete the mesh renderer. So remove that component. Gonna add component physics. Um, we're gonna add the mesh collider. Okay, so now they each have a collider on them. And now we can bring back the gimbals. And I'm gonna once again pair them up with the correct chambers. Okay, so now they're all matched with the right gimbals and thrust transforms and they have colliders. Okay, so now, uh, well, I don't know if they look right, but we'll, we'll find out. Okay, now, right. Okay, so it's written to the folder that I told it to write to. And so if I look at KRE, no, uh, it's KSLV. Uh, we will see the .mu file, which is the model file, and then the normal map and color map for, or texture for the three different materials. And now we're going to have to create some text files. So create, create a text document. And well, uh, depending on whether you're doing this in stock or with other stuff, uh, I'm just gonna create a text document that is a CFG file. It has to be .CFG and I name it the same as the model file. Yep. Okay. So we've got that as the, that's going to be the configuration file. I'm also going to have a, a textures unlimited file so that we get the shininess. Oh, sorry. Nope. Uh, this one has to be named tu-kre-1075. Uh, Actually, I'll probably end up having just one textures unlimited file for all the parts in this directory, so I'll just call it kslv. And it's still a CFG. And we'll have an RO, Realism Overhaul configuration for kslv. Okay, so now we have three configuration files to deal with in order to import it into 
Kerbal. Now you could have as little as one if you're not doing textures, not doing textures unlimited. You could just have the base configuration file. And RO you might not need. But what I'm going to do is just as a basic thing, I'm gonna copy a configuration for an engine that I already have. This I'm not going to start from scratch here. So I think I'll pick my ED4 engine as a basis. And I'll just pick these up. Same same set of three different configurations. So I'm just gonna copy this one. And you could use the stock engines as an example. But you can see there's already an exhaust. In this case, it's a Hydrolox flame, which might not be correct for this engine because it's a kerosene engine. Uh, I have I always use the EDB prefix, and uh, otherwise I'll name the part exactly how the model is. Um, Sometimes I don't, but sometimes I do. And uh, here is the directory structure under game data. So kslv slash, and we want the model file, whatever we named the .mu. Uh, typically, the realism overhaul realistic uh, parts are scaled down by a factor of 64 uh, to 64% for stock. And then we have a node stack top and node stack bottom. So this is where they attach to other parts. Uh, generally, you're going to look in Blender for this. And I would pick the top of the collider. And so if we take a look, a shift right click to move your 3D cursor, which will automatically attach to surfaces. It likes surfaces. So it's attaching to the top surface of that um, collider. And that z-axis is 0.9586 and we'll just set the attachment to 0, 0 otherwise and the bomb is at negative 1. We could just do positive 1 and negative 1. Um, so uh, but I'll go with the more precise 9586 and then negative 0.1. Uh, this is the x, y, and z. Remember in Unity the z becomes the y and so that's we have that's why we have the up down axis on this one and so this is the bottom of it and then we also have rotation of the attachment node so this top node is pointing up which it should and the bottom node is pointing down and so that's x y and z for where the node is pointing and then we have the size of the node which is in this case two uh, basic rocketry, I don't care about the tech required costs or whatever, I don't do that. It's sure an engine, and it is the KRE-075 times 4. And this Korean Aerospace Research Institute. And that's, that's what I'm going to go with here. And main, uh, first stage engine. for the KSLV system, uh, KSLV-2 system. Okay, and Tashi was fine. Uh, mass will depend on what we want for, out of this engine in stock. I'll just leave the rest of this be, to be honest. I'm not concerned about the stock configuration of this engine too much, as long as it's consistent with other parts. So the only thing is maybe we could change the plume, but I'm not going to mess with that right now because uh, I'm ultimately going to put real plume on it. The gimbal is probably a little bit too vigorous. So we named the gimbal transform gimbal, and so that's fine. We named the thrust transform thrust transform just like this, so that's fine. This is the ISPs. That's the vacuum. That's the sea level, and that's under six atmospheres. That's the max thrust there. This is module engines FX. This has all... So yeah, let's just go through the modules. This is the actual effects. This is the plume. So that's all the, all the plume, and you can copy it from another Kerbal part that has the plume that you want. And then this is uh, identifying the stuff for the engine, including the liquid fuel and oxidizer and ratios. So for a nuclear engine, it'd just be liquid fuel, and you'd go 1.0. And for a model propellant engine, you just put model propellant uh, big M, big P and everything else lowercase and 1.0 for that as well and then this is the ISP as mentioned the gimbal and whatever those are I don't know but <laughs> I just leave them be uh, everything else is probably self-explanatory 
Uh, this is probably not a sustainer engine, but I'm not going to mess with that. So that's a good enough stock configuration as far as I'm concerned. As far as what we want to do with RO, if we take a look at the configuration for this one. I'm going to copy it first. And we'll get the, this is the real plume section, so we'll get that too. Okay, so first of all, we have to edit the part name. That's the part name here. Grab that, copy, control C for copy, control V for paste. Um, we need the mass of the engine. Uh, the mass of the engine I have here is each one is 0.99 tons. So we've got four of them. So we're going to go 3.96. And actually, uh, that's a good point. Over here, maybe we should have... It's it's a cluster of six, uh, four of them, so maybe I'll multiply by four for everything. So it's a 1,200 on that. Okay, and um, so the thrust that we get out of this is average thrust. Uh, well, there's a average thrust in a post-launch analysis. Great, uh, but each nozzle seven twenty six point one, and we'll multiply by four. So uh, min thrust and max thrust for realism overhaul is the same, unless it throttles, which I don't think these do. Okay, it's not methane, it's actually kerosene and liquid oxygen. Um, those ratios will not be right, so we need a kerosene oxygen engine for reference. This will at least be a reasonable ratio to start off with. So you can look in the realism overhaul directory and find the ratio of some engine that you think is similar. The ISP of this engine is uh, 298.3 and the sea level I don't have a number on unfortunately. I think I, I okay I see one, uh, 261.6. It's not a particularly great engine, but they're not actually using RP-1 style kerosene. They're using aviation fuel kind of kerosene. So not quite as good. Ullage is true. It has to have the fuel settled. Pressure fed is false. It's not a pressure fed engine. As far as I know, it only ignites once. So uh, the percentage sign in front here means that it's adding it if there isn't one already. If there is one, it'll adjust it. At means that it definitely knows it's there and it's changing it. So here, all these, those components are already there in the original file, that's this one. And so it's pointing at these things saying, hey, at module, module engines, asterisk is a catch-all for anything that follows. So uh, it's catching the FX. Uh, so whether there's FX there or not, it'll get that. And then it's adding the min thrust, and so it's going to that min thrust there and changing that, and so forth. It's going through all of them at propellant liquid fuel. So it goes at the propellant that has the name liquid fuel. So instead of uh, having it, uh, you, uh, it's changing the name here, but uh, you put the name in the square brackets. So ratios. And then this is the syntax for how we address the atmospheric curve, the ISPs. So that's how that's done. Okay, then uh, in order to get a plume, you have to have this module engine config. This is, again, something you would copy from an RO file, some other configuration that already exists. Oh, speaking of which, we need to change the model name, huh? So back up here, copy the model. This is where we rescale it to realism overhaul size, so we need that. And then uh, that becomes our configuration and our name and the thrust gets copied into here. All the same data, it's not different. And so kerosene as well. But no at here because this module engine config did not exist before. Now, if you wanted the engine to have more than one configuration, this is where you put them. If you wanted it to have sort of an upgraded version, uh, you could put another configuration here, call this upgrade 
and then change the numbers to whatever you want. And so then you'll be able to use the engine config, uh, engine UI thing in that comes with realism overhaul and real fuels. Uh, we have to make sure to get the atmospheric curve again, the ISPs. And so that's necessary for real plume. Uh, this is a thing that adds a gimbal response speed to the module gimbal. That's helpful for KOS. It gets a little bit fidgety otherwise. And then we once again need to address the right part. Remember to change the part that you're addressing for each bit. And uh, Carolox lower is perfect for this. Uh, so that's the power effect name. You'll change that with the plume that you want. How do you find the plume? Well, uh, uh, in your KSP folder. So under real plume, you'll see these generic plumes and these are the plume names. So this Carolox lower is just, it's actually not in this one. I think it's in the deprecated folder. So we'll probably have to change that eventually. This one here, Carolox lower. There's also a Carolox lower F1. Uh, apparently these are on the outs and these are new type. So we would pick, apparently the lower NK33 is popular <laughs> and still valid. So you can get these and select them. So maybe we'll go with NK lower NK33. This, uh, I don't know, there's an underscore there. These were dashes. Some of these were dashes, some of these were underscore. Um, no, all right, underscore instead of dash. Hopefully that's going to be okay. And we have to have the same thing here. And generally the position is fine, but you might have to tweak that. Everything else should be fine. So it's zero, zero is where we have the tr thrust transform. And okay, so that's, that's going to be fine for this. And the thrust is going to be all four chambers combined. The textures unlimited, uh, it's again good to find some other part that has textures unlimited and just copy and paste. There's a thing that uh, addresses the reflection config, needs textures unlimited, so it requires that you have the mod in there. And enabled equals true. And again, just in case that hasn't been stated before. And then we need the name of the model again. So that's that bit. We need a name of the mesh. I mean, yeah, well, the model, the .mu file, and then the texture. Uh, I always use metallic. This is if you want to assign a different shininess to different uh, meshes in the model. So we've got all these uh, meshes in the middle. So if you wanted the, this bump to be differently shiny from this bump and different from the chamber, uh, you can just assign them, uh, so some of the meshes will go in here and then you'll create a new uh, texture thing and add a different one with different meshes, but I'm not going to do that. We'll have the same shininess for everything here for now. And I'm not going to go 2 because that's really, really bright. I'm going to go 1.5 for this one. And this is how metallic it is. And so we're going to make it mm, 0.7 metallic. And it's not that smooth. We'll put 0.6 smoothness, so it'll be a little bit rough. And we'll see what the results of that are. Let's see if this works in KSP 1.8.1. Maybe I've wasted all my time. We'll find out. So there's this KSLV folder with the configs, and we'll just copy this folder into in this case, in my case, is the EDM mods folder with the parts in. And so that's the folder that I'm going to be copying it into in my install. So this is my install with all the things. And I'm just going to dump it in here for now. And we will test it out. So I'll run this. This is going to be in 1.8.1. And if I'm lucky, he'll work. Okay, well, here I am in Kerbal Space Program, and I've typed KRE, and indeed, there it is. And it's shinier in the part preview for some reason than it is out here. But, yep, 
there's the engine, the well, the four engines really. Uh, and if we click on it, we can see the nodes, but does it work properly? Well, let's get ourselves a procedural tank. But we do see it's already prompted us to fill with kerosene and oxygen here. I was going to tuck this in just for the heck of it. And so we will, kerosene and oxygen. And we don't have an upper stage and we're not carrying any payload, so of course it has plenty of delta V. And we are going to see whether this works or not. Actually, that should be a little bit bigger. It looks awkward. Uh, we That's enough electric charge for what we're going to do. Can it lift off the ground? Yep. So here we go, our makeshift rocket, SAS on, SAS on throttle is up, and we need the engine in a separate stage because it does take some time to spool up. And uh, so ignition. Okay, we'll see how that plume looks after we launch. It seems like the plumes need to be moved down, huh? And let, let's take a good look at whether the gimbling is happening. Uh, can't really see very well. So smoke screen is up here and there's different components to the particles. Uh, those are those. And that, that puff is this flare. If I take off the flare, it's like this. Okay, um, let me try and initiate her. Okay, there we go. We saw some gimbling. And we can control rolls, so there's definitely four different gimbals happening. You can see them gimbal there. Oh, well, very interesting. I'll, let me try and shift the plume down. But so far, so good. I'm usually... I usually hate the plume adjustments stuff, and here we are again. At least the part is here, though clearly uh, there's some shader problem with the new part tools. Uh, that shader did not work for me when I imported it into Unity, so I'll have to investigate that further. Welcome to the world of working with KSP and importing parts into it. You know what, I wonder if it's because I'm using this NK331 instead of my usual Carolox lower. I'm gonna go back to my Carolox lower, even though it's deprecated, and see if at 000 it's gonna be in the right place or not. I'm just curious. Okay, well this is better. Um, so this Carolox lower plume, the original one, is certainly better, but it still needs to be moved down about the length of the nozzle, which is one meter. So we just need to move it down one meter, and maybe that'll be good. And it's actually on the Z Z one, so it's on the it's going with the Blender coordinate system instead of the Unity one, which is weird. I don't know why, but uh, okay, we'll try negative one and see if that fixes it or not. Oh, I had totally forgotten. You can in fact edit the plumes in game. So let's just backtrack here. So, uh, smoke screen, that's that window. And then we have the plume components. And uh, you click this open config editor in an import. And then you can edit it. Uh, that's still not looking quite right. Let's see, 1.5? Uh, I didn't want to press enter. Apply. I think it's 1. Point, I think instead of negative 1.0, it's 1.0. So that's that part. Seems like I can't, I can't override that flare. I can move the other things. So this one I can change. If I move this, that can move. Maybe 0 0.9 apply. Of course, we've got the bubble version of the plume. Which people seem to not like. It's not because we don't have enough particles. But yeah, I hate editing plumes, let me just say. So, if you're looking for plume editing advice, this is probably not the place to come. Okay, let me just uh, release and see if anything else is going... Oh, now, now it's all much further away. I think that initial flare is important to us. So, I'll, I'll tinker with the plumes separately. You get the picture. 
You get the picture. We've got the right thrust. It's using the right fuels. Oh, wait. The ratio is... Oh. Hmm. Starts looking up there, but then... It sort of moves down a bit. Uh, now they're in parallel. It's probably because we were burning so long on the clamps and something else happened to cause it to be off balance. But okay, yeah. Uh, so there are some shader problems apparently. I don't know how to fix that. If you guys know, please do tell me. And I guess maybe I'll have a chance of fixing my parts in 1.10 if you, I can figure out exactly why there are shader problems in 1.10. Uh, with those part tools, but uh, for now, when I try and import the newest part tool package, it ends up making my parts purple. Other than that, uh, well, this is basically how the stuff is done as far as bringing the parts into Kerbal Space Program. The plumes, you're gonna have to fiddle around with them too, and I will have to fiddle around with them more. And... Yeah, but otherwise, generally successful. We've got the engines doing what we wanted them to do, uh, providing the thrust and ISP and using the fuels that I asked of him, having no more ignitions, just one ignition, everything else is as planned, including the gimbal. So, yeah, so you know how to import a uh, rocket engine into Kerbal, assuming everything else goes well. And otherwise, Plume is looking okay, it's just that flare that I need to fix. Anyway, so with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.